Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I have the Rapid Aiming Dot, the Rad Pro here from Crimson Trace on the table. I'm going to be putting it on my Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0. This is the compact version, the 4-inch barrel on there. These come with the plate system, so I did have the Swamp Fox on there. I took that off. That takes the RMR plate. This takes the Doctor plate. Crimson Trace is their CT Rad footprint, which is compatible with the Doctor. So here for your Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0, you're going to be using the Type 3 plate on here. Let's open it up, take a look. We've had a mishap here. We've lost our hang tag on there. Not a big deal. So you can see we got a bunch of goodies in here. We've got a good old Crimson Trace sticker that comes in there. We've got our microfiber cloth that comes in there. You actually get a Picatinny mount in the package. So if you wanted to put this on your AR or somewhere else that had a Picatinny rail on it, you do have the mount available for that. We have all our screws in here. They've all got blue Loctite on them. Your wrench to install it. You have a cover for your optic here. It's over there nice, nice and pliable, easy to get off. We have our battery compartment wrench and our adjustment screwdriver here. So let's put the battery in here. Then I've got the battery in here. I'm gonna take a couple measurements, compare it to what you'd have here on an, an RMR footprint, and then we'll get it installed now. They did change out this over their previous version of Red Dot, and they put the top load battery in this, which is exactly what they need. As far as I'm concerned, everybody should be doing a top load or like Hollow Sun is doing, is doing the side load. We do have your brightness adjustment buttons here on either side of it. You've got a rubberized texture here. So when you put it on there, if you're using this to rack it, you're gonna be good there. You've got your recessed glass here like most of them now, so you're not racking, if you did a barrier rack or anything, you're not racking straight off the glass on there. And we do have an ambient light sensor on there, so you can change according to the ambient light as well. As I said, this is a doctor footprint, so some of this is going to be different. Mostly your whole pattern here is going to be different. As you can see here, we've got just, just about 10 millimeters between the holes on this one, whereas if you had your regular armor footprint, you've got almost 15 between the holes on that one. So these are quite a bit different. They're not gonna be compatible. One thing that I did find out is that the hole footprint on the doctor is similar enough to the smaller dots, the RMSC footprint, that if you do have a doctor cut on a pistol you can put one of these smaller dots on there you're just going to have you know extra cut left over because it's not going to be as big but the whole patterns do pretty much match up on that now as far as the other dimensions on this nothing should be that big a difference because they're still going to fit on the same pistols it's just going to be some minor differences and there you got 27 millimeters wide on that you got about 27 millimeters wide here 
front to back. Our lengths, I believe, are going to be different because the, bot, the doctor is longer. So you've got about 45 millimeters long on the RMR footprint. And you got about 45 there too. So 45.88, what did we end up here? 45.1, so yeah, see, you are a little longer. I told you you were longer. Uh, overall height on the Crimson Trace is 26.45. Overall height on the Swamp Fox is 25.34, so you're a little taller on the Crimson Trace. And then, of course, we've got the one that's going to matter as far as doing your uh, co-witness. You've got 9.97, so you're just under 10 millimeters from the bottom of it to the top of the rear. And the Swamp Fox, it looks like, is a little bit thinner. You've got 9.07. So that's what it looks like in comparison to an RMR compatible type dot. The Swamp Fox is RMR compatible. This is doctor compatible. Let's take a look at some of the features on this one and then we'll get it installed on the M&P. Now the Crimson Trace Rad Pro is a 3 MOA red dot. I'll try and get you somewhere there so you can see the dot on it. Hopefully it's coming through. You do have the CT radiant sensor on here on the front so you can adjust it to the ambient light. You do have your brightness adjustment buttons here on the side. You do have a motion sensor, so this is shake awake, unlike the previous version. So the top load and the shake awake and manual brightness ability, all things that I think belong on a defensive pistol red dot. So this one is completely set up for it. And we talked about the recessed glass on it, which is Honestly, most of them are coming with the recessed glass. It's kind of stupid not to put recessed glass on there because you don't want to rack on a barrier right on that glass. So that is pretty much a standard feature, but it is included. We are IPX7 waterproof on this. When you have the battery screwed in and down, you are completely sealed here on the bottom. It appears to be. We do have an automatic shutdown function. If it is on for eight hours straight, it will shut down. And of course, we did have the shake awake on here. And of course, as you can see, we do have a little bit of a different top strap on there than what we have from the Swamp Fox or the Hollow Sun, which is just curved. And of course, the one that, you know, everybody says you should get that has little horns on the end. So nobody can do that one. So everybody's trying to do what they can to mitigate any kind of problem here. If you were to drop it, it looks like they've got it beefed up here on the corners. You got a little bit of a relief cut there for it. And we did go completely flat across there. You got an angle going from the front to the back. So I'm sure all that is designed to deflect any kind of force if it does fall down onto the optic. So let's get it installed on the Smith & Wesson here and then we'll get out to the range and do some testing with it. All right, so I did have a little bit of an issue here with the Type 3 doctor plate. If you look real close here, I think the way this is coming around here is keeping me from getting completely up there to where it's supposed to be, and it won't fit in there. I did have the Type 5 plate here And that does work on the M&P 2.0 to mount this. So I'm going to run that plate on here. So there we've got it installed on the pistol. This is all I ever use to install my red dots. You don't need to get in there. You don't need to crank them down. You don't need to give them all kinds of pressure. You get in there, you get them tight, and then you just give them just a little bit of snug up that's what i use you can get yourself a torque wrench that goes to inch pounds so far i haven't had a problem with it but don't get in there and really crank those down because then you're going to end up with a bad day <laughs> 